Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this series of videos we're working on AZ900 uh, series uh, labs which is for the exam Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. These series of labs are available uh, on the GitHub and I'll provide you the link to this uh, particular link resource. In this uh, particular lab we're going to implement the Azure function we already have six other videos we have we have done other things all of that stuff they've done if you look at the playlist uh, you will find how to create all of that uh, as well in this lab we're going to work on the functions uh, uh, as your function and the first task is to create a function app and just like any other uh, resources within Azure we're going to copy that and click on add from the portal to configure this so let's do it so I'm already logged in to my Azure account. So I click on function, search for the function app. It showed up, click on that. Should give me an add button here. So click add, it should give me a new blade or new window, whatever you call. There I'm gonna configure this uh, the way I want. So name, whatever subscription you're using, use that one. You're gonna create a new resource group by this name. So create new my rg function we got it and function app name has to be unique so what we'll do we'll put that and then we'll change that to a basu so that is a unique name we have that available publish is a code and running task dot net core code and runtime stack we're gonna use dot uh, net core and uh, east us east us is my favorite place to deploy and if you're uh, using my lab series you know this by now by heart uh, so at this time we can we don't have to configure anything else so just uh, create uh, review and then it will go to the validation as soon as it feels like yeah it has all the permissions and everything is looks good it will give you the create button and we'll create start creating the app so let's go back to the lab uh, it will say wait for the notification that the resources has been created once this is created we'll go back to the function app blade and make sure that our app is running so let's go back so now we can click on create so now this page is going to change it will immediately or in a second you will see that it's going to tell usually that's what it does it didn't happen it for whatever reason but if you look at over here it says initializing deployment submitting the deployment template for resource group my rg function so it's yeah so now it has changed and uh, your deployment is underway you can also click on here to see the same information so just give me a few minutes i'm going to pause the video as soon as the deployment is done we'll get back and start working on the remaining task hey all the resources still deploy i wanted to show you something so sometimes when you deploy one thing it actually has to go through several different things that needs to be created for this uh, function app look how many resources there you need a microsoft web server forms provider storage account provider components provider from microsoft insights components from microsoft insights now is the deployment is now complete so to go to the deployment you just click on here and it will take you to that particular function app uh, so it's listed as an app service you can also look at the icon to tell what kind of uh, resource you're looking at its status is running oh, oh we by mistake we chose East Asia I should have chosen uh, East US but that's fine uh, URL is this operating system is Windows uh, here's the app service plan that it's using Okay, and it's going to going. It's giving you some uh, information about that. Uh, so make sure that it's running. Set we have already done that. Now next task that we're going to do is we're going to create a HTTP triggered function and test whether it's working. So in this task on the function and blade, we are going to go under the functions and add a new function. So under the functions, you have the functions. So click on the functions and as soon as this is ready we're gonna click on add to add a new function and we're gonna configure this according to the to that lab and we want the HTTP trigger so we'll click on the HTTP trigger 
uh, and it should give me a little bit more information so new function and function let's see if they're asking for a particular name uh, function name accept the default so it's just asking just to use the default uh, values for the new function and just click on the create function so it's gonna create the function for us so that's all good on the HTTP one trigger blade in the developer section click code plus test so once this uh, trigger is now done you see there is under the developer we have the code plus test so we are clicking on that one to get to that section and uh, on this blade review the auto generated code and note the code is designed to run an HTTP request and log information also notice the function returns a hello message with a name so let's look at this uh, code just a little so here is your public static method this is the task function uh, what is it doing is logging some information for HTTP trigger uh, it's uh, run dot qu requested query getting the name and then going through the request body analyzing some data and uh, then it's uh, uh, you have a response and and pretty much this is returning a response mis response message uh, okay object result so if everything is good this HTTP triggered function executed successfully all of that is going to get uh, returned okay so come back um, so here they're also saying what is the task request so you're putting your pass you're going to pass the HTTP request as a REQ as a parameter and uh, lock is another parameter and this is going to be the output uh, click on get function URL from the top section of the editor so if you look at the editor here is a get function URL you can click on it Here's the URL, so you can copy this one, and I'm going to put it in some place, so we may need to use it. So uh, and copy the URL, and uh, open a browser and paste the copied URL. When the page is requested, the function will run. Notice the return message stating that the function requires a name in the request body. So let's see. So let's try to just put it here, and if I run it it says uh, HTTP trigger function execute successfully pass a name in the query string or in the request body or a personalized response so that's what is expected so function ran properly but we just need to provide a name okay so append and name to the end of the URL so what we're gonna do this is uh, passing the query string to our request so we'll go back at the very end and so let's put a B A S B A S U as my name so let's uh, get this come back over here put and then run again now look at that it says hello a basu this HTTP triggered function executed successfully so that's excellent that's what we wanted that's what we that's what is ex expected uh, when your function have runs every invocation is traced to view the traces in Azure portal return to the HTTP trigger one code test blade and click on monitor so every request is made is 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 logged within this monitor uh, blade so we should be able to see uh, when we just did pass that information it should be there it's not showing me anything though right now maybe under logs okay let's, well this log is coming up let's uh, come over here uh, actually in over here invocation traces is right there but it didn't show us any invocation traces maybe it takes a little bit of time to gather all the invocation it says zero in last 30 days that's we know that's not true that's not true because we just here is another invocation we just made so let's refresh this and see if it takes a little bit of time to generate that information uh, and to populate everything in here still don't have it all right so let's let's keep going uh oh so let's keep keep going with this uh, lab uh, we'll go back over here and go back to the monitoring so for sure it looks like uh, 
all right <laughs> so right there is your problem results may be delayed for up to five minutes so this needs to be processed and then populated over here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wait for another five minutes then come back and uh, verify that those invocations are now truly saved in here and at that time we can end the lab so pretty much what we did in this lab we started with create creation of a function app that was pretty easy from the function app we created a function app and then we created a HTTP trigger and uh, once we created the HTTP trigger okay that trigger we used all the default values and then uh, we copied the function URL every function has a URL and then we got the URL and we even pass a name in that URL and then uh, right now we are waiting to see the success count that value that should show up under the monitor because function apps anything anybody is using that is uh, uh, that logs that information should be available under traces so right now we are kind of waiting because it says results may be delayed for up to five minutes so refresh one more time before I pause and if it's still not here we'll just uh, wait and I'll come back but there we go so it's now showing up so I don't really have to pause the video so here we go so now that lab is completely done and we have proven that all of the connections that we're making to the function app they are logged under the monitor section uh, that's all in this video uh, if you're preparing for the is 900 as your uh, fundamental exam certification good luck if you like the video give me a like subscribe leave your comment if you like you know for any improvements ideas leave a comment uh, and at the end good luck with the exam thank you for watching the video